Hey guys, how is it going? It's your boy Gaza9919 here, and you join me today on a review on this, the BMW E61, or the, uh, the 525D, whichever you want to call it. First things first, let's address the elephant in the room, and that is the looks, and years ago when this car was first brought out, people were very unsure about how it looked. They thought it looked too modern, too futuristic. But you know, you look at it in this day and age, then if anything, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's something modern as it does tend to blend in. And then we move to the inside. As you can see in here, it's quite, everything's rather modern and to the point. And one of the cooler features I like is at night, like the uh, mood lighting that you have, you're not gonna see it so much here, but there's these two little holes here and uh, they beam out this sort of orange light. That pattern goes throughout the dials, on the door cards with the window and stuff like that. Basically anything that lights up on the interior is mostly orange and it's a really soothing sort of light. Now to the back seats. You have to excuse the baby bottle and the bottle of water. Um, right, okay, so the back seats, you know, this seat is set quite far back. You know, I'd like to think I'm tallish. I'm close to the six foot mark. So this seat is quite far back and as you can see, the leg room is really good. Obviously as well for something like this, like the uh, the headroom, it's, it's gonna be unreal. Overall, it's just very, very comfortable. As soon as you shut this door, you're like nice and cocooned in here. Also, you have this armrest. It's also nice and you've got your, if you push this button here, you've got two cup holders that come out, rather nice and convenient. And also a little storage area for any sort of paperwork or anything like that. Very convenient, or if obviously you're a businessman and you've been chauffeured about in one of these, well, back in the day, not now, I don't think, you'd, you'd probably get something a bit fancier nowadays. Um, you'd probably have your tablet or whatever in there, or your notebook. As we move round into the boot, in here is where your battery lives, and supposedly a first aid box, but I do not have one. And in here, you just got a bit of extra storage there as well. Also, underneath here, this rather interestingly, runs on gas struts for this little bit here which is pretty cool uh, they're quite weak but i think that's only because i've got some stuff on top of it you've obviously got your tow eye there and then you've got all this extra bit of storage here now under here is where your spare wheel would be obviously it's an optional extra and yeah obviously as you can see your collapsible tow bar but yeah we either the car either didn't come with a spare wheel or it's been used and just never replaced. Also, another fun feature, these seats do fold as good as flat. So the next thing you might have noticed that is missing from this car is the boot cover, uh, the boot liner or whatever you want to call it. As you can see, it's got the slots for it. And these are, they're quite easy to sort of come by, but even for a second hand one, you're paying anywhere from 80 to 100 pound or maybe even 70 if you're lucky, but it's just, I can't justify spending that much money on just a cover. Now let's move on to the thing that's powering this two ton heap of metal. And that is a BMW's M57 2.5 litre diesel engine with a single turbo. This one in particular produces a mighty 177 brake horsepower. Uh, you can't really do a lot tuning wise with these if you've got the automatic as the torque converter is already kicking out the max amount of torque so it's sort of that's the best you're gonna get but to be fair it's quite nippy enough for the for its size you know and the engine itself these engines are bulletproof the only things you have to look out for on these is the swirl flaps which are in the inlet manifold they're made of plastic and tend to break and they get sucked into the combustion chamber and kill the engine basically uh, if you are thinking of buying one of these cars, I would not advise going for anything lower than a 2.5 litre. You can get a 520D if you're quite well mechanically minded, but if you want to save yourself a lot of trouble, go for the six cylinder, because the, the issue you have with the four cylinder for the 520 is that one, the timing chain is on the back, and two, the timing chain is thinner than this one. This one is like double in thickness, and the timing chain on the two liter diesel is a sort of single in comparison, like half the thickness of the six cylinder. And obviously when they fail, and you need to get it replaced, but it's at the back of the engine, you're looking at about roughly about a grand to get it fixed. So yeah, it's probably just best to save yourself that hassle and go for one of these. So now let's talk running cost of something like this. Um, you know, by no means is it a small little Ford K or anything like that. It is quite expensive to run, 
My insurance for me with a few years no claims is about £65 a month. The tax is £30 a month. Fuel costs me roughly about £20 a week. So probably about £80 a month. Then I travel about just over six miles, five days a week. Which is another thing. If you are going to get one of these cars, you want to make sure you're doing long distances as these diesels do like a good run. But obviously, I've sort of messed up because I, when I did buy the car i was in a job where i was driving further distances but now due to some certain circumstances i've had to um, go to a job that's closer near to me but anyway maintenance cost i've said this before in my videos it's quite high for the maintenance mainly because you sort of i don't know you're not really doubling up on everything but you've got to buy more for more than your usual car like for example with the oil it takes more than five liters of oil i think it's around seven liters of oil or something seven or eight seven or eight liters of oil so therefore you've got to buy two five liter jugs and then we go to the pollen filters and usually on your conventional everyday car you sort of only got the one pollen filter but on these you've got two pollen filters i know it's something that people don't really bother about too much but personally i like to change them the air filter on it is quite mahoosive in comparison to a lot of other air filters because a lot of air filters it's usually just a rectangular panel filter whereas this is an ex like a long cylinder shaped and on top of that if you do buy a car like this nowadays with this amount of mileage on you know and this age is really the sort of age where things do start to go wrong on cars and stuff like that so you've got to be prepared to sort of let go if you need to but like i said with the m57 engine they're really really good engines so they should last a while i have seen some of these engines go up to easy 300,000 miles obviously with it being a diesel they they do run quite a while and especially considering the n47 engines can live up to like 200,000 and they're the unreliable engines it just goes to show how much these can probably live on for the only thing that might go is the zf gearbox but again even the zf gearbox in this is quite reliable and now I'm going to move on to how it drives. Now, as you expect from a piece of German engineering, the ride is very smooth. It's got many control arms and self-leveling things and stuff like that. And it really does help with the bag suspension as well that it has on the rear. If you're ever driving along with something that it will level itself to compensate for the extra weight. And obviously I'm gonna talk about the thing also, which is, in general, you know, you've got 177 brake horsepower. Does it feel quick for something this heavy? And well, yes, it does. Yes, it does indeed. It picks up quite a bit. Let's say, for example, if you need to pull out onto a dual carriageway from 0 to 70, won't struggle too much to do that either and mash up with traffic yeah for the most part it is a very good car driving wise and i've noticed when you do um sometimes if you get a bit too excited the traction control on the rear end is really good and it does correct itself very well so to conclude if you want a cheap family car that's easy to run don't get one of these get a Mondeo or a Focus or something like that, that's where I'd be inclined to go towards, or maybe even a Volkswagen or something along the lines of that, something cheap. Uh, but if you do, if you are bored of just having boring cars and want something a little different and a little more fun, I'd get this. You'll never afford to run it, but by God, it's worth it when you want to have a bit of fun. All I can really say is dependent on how much you are bothered about boot space and things like that, it probably would be a lot more convenient to get the E60, that is the saloon model of this, uh, as obviously you won't have the uh, hinge wiring issue and you won't have the airbags on it to worry about, it would just be sort of your bog standard suspension. The only problem with those is I think water can get in through the boots from time to time, but that's just dealing with seals and things like that apart from that you know all in all i've really enjoyed this car i've really enjoyed driving it for the past year that i've owned it or well, it's basically been around a year i'd strongly recommend that somebody at least own one of these at some point in their life even if it's not for long you know i think you've, you've got to experience the 5 series at some point but anyway that is it for this review on my bmw 5 series 
525D E61. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe even hit that bell icon for notifications on future uploads. Until the next time, guys, peace.